Hi, I'm Eric Voss, and every time a new superhero movie comes out that we really like, inevitably the discussion always turns to, well, it was good, but it obviously wasn't as good as The Dark Knight. Like, Wonder Woman, best DC movie since The Dark Knight. Or even if you thought Logan was better than The Dark Knight, The Dark Knight is still the gold standard that you compare it to. So why is that? In the past nine years since the movie came out, we've heard countless love letters on why The Dark Knight is amazing. Will we ever consider any new superhero movie to be better than The Dark Knight? Is it even possible? Yes, I think it is. It's just gonna be really hard. So I'm gonna get into some deeper reasons why exactly The Dark Knight holds this near unreachable status. And as I see it, once you look past all the normal great qualities about the movie, there are four big reasons why people still look up to it as the best superhero movie. The first is that The Dark Knight is not a superhero movie. This is pretty annoying, I know. Like you may have read this as some clever think piece headline online and thought, shut up, of course it's a superhero movie. It's got Batman and the Joker in it. Like, what else do you need? And yes, you're you're right. But when you analyze the genre of The Dark Knight, it has way less in common with movies like the Spider-Man and X-Men films that preceded it in 2000s, and the first Iron Man, which came out the same summer, than it does with modern crime dramas like Michael Mann's Heat. In fact, Christopher Nolan mentioned Heat as a major influence. Both movies open with explosive heist sequences and build up to intense first encounters between the hero and villain at the midpoint, debating morality as they sit across the table from each other. Now compare this to the superhero movie subgenre as defined so well by Marvel Studios. Fun, mostly lighthearted movies built around amazing visual effects and action set pieces. Nowadays, actually, DC movies have pivoted to fit into that overall genre more and more. So when we compare all these subsequent superhero movies to The Dark Knight, we're comparing apples to oranges or comparing apples to other apples that are shot through an orange lens that tastes a lot like oranges. And just because it tastes like oranges doesn't necessarily mean it's better. I actually love the superhero movie as a genre. That said, the genre of crime drama allows a filmmaker to explore themes like moral code and the criminal mind, themes that most people think make a film more resonant and meaningful in the long run. Now, to be fair, Christopher Nolan was only able to take Batman in that direction because the character was already pretty far along in its cinematic evolution. Remember, before Nolan, so many versions of Batman had been established on the big screen. The films of Tim Burton and Joel Schumacher, and long before that, the Adam West take on the character, R.I.P. Adam West. Basically, there was already a standard for Nolan to respond to and to reinvent. Meanwhile, Marvel is still way younger in its character's evolution. There's only been one Iron Man, one Captain America, one Guardians of the Galaxy. Marvel isn't reinventing yet, they're still inventing, expanding the successful business model with more heroes that could all plausibly be in a movie together at some point. So I think it's gonna be really hard for us to look at a new Thor movie and praise it as a radical reinvention of the genre like The Dark Knight was. It's just not a fair comparison. Now, some people have said that Deadpool is an exception to this trend. Like, it was a reinvention of a previous version of the character, and its tone and sense of humor were way more subversive than we're used to seeing in a superhero movie. But despite its parody elements, the genre of Deadpool is still all superhero. There's an origin story, a superpowered villain, a damsel in distress, and a fireworks finale. And the fact that we bought into this and cared so much about these story beats makes Deadpool part of this superhero genre. Really, I think the recent exception to this trend is Logan. Unlike all the X-Men movies that preceded it, Logan is a pure Western. It's an off-type genre that uses superheroes like The Dark Knight does, but it's still a Western. Logan is light on spectacle and visual effects. It gets very little joy out of its characters using their powers, and its finale is not at all simple or clean. The movie is about the physical and emotional toll that being a hero takes on the individual. And sure, even though Hugh Jackman has been the only actor to play Wolverine, his movies have gone through a similar evolution on screen as Batman, sometimes coming off as a joke and bordering on exhaustion. So a transformation into a new genre feels earned. So the arguments that Logan might be the first film about a superhero to be as good as The Dark Knight might be justified, but there are still a few other key reasons that The Dark Knight is just gonna be really hard to top. The second reason that I see is the setting. Now this often gets overlooked, but Nolan's Dark Knight movies are really about one central character, the city of Gotham. Yes, I'm using the term character loosely here. Obviously, Bruce Wayne and Alfred and Gordon and Rachel Dawes are all key characters. But at the end of the day, each of these three movies, and mostly The Dark Knight, are about saving the soul of Gotham. For example, the finale of The Dark Knight isn't so much a fist fight between Batman and the Joker. It's a debate of ideals between the figures over whether the people of Gotham will, when given the option, prove themselves to be heroes or cowards. In this way, Nolan was able to use 
use Gotham as a microcosm for humanity, where instead of a battle for human lives and safety, it became more of a specific battle for human decency, a different take on humanity. And Nolan reinforces the importance of this environment by showing us so many interesting angles of Gotham City. It starts with the shiny vertical skyscrapers, but it also shows the pedestrian street level, and then going even deeper, the seedy criminal underbelly. Now, Nolan didn't invent this idea of Gotham as a symbol. Batman actually has a long history in the comics of a relationship with his home streets. But the fact is, not many other superheroes that we see in the movies share this kind of thematic connection with their setting. Now, I guess Spider-Man is very much a New York superhero, which was definitely a part of the fun of those first two movies. And then on the Marvel Netflix side of things, Daredevil's roots in Hell's Kitchen is absolutely a big part of that series. But recently, really, other than the Avengers battling to save New York, I can't think of another superhero movie where the environment was so crucial to the story. Now, not that superhero movies always have to have that, but it's one device used in The Dark Knight to help elevate it over the rest. Now, another key reason for The Dark Knight's status, which you cannot avoid when you're talking about The Dark Knight, is the villain, Heath Ledger's The Joker. Now, Nolan dared to allow this villain to overtake the story at the risk of outshining the hero and risking the overall franchise. The Joker is the driving force of this whole narrative. He completely hijacks the story, sweeping up Harvey Dent into his campaign of anarchy, using him as his ace in a hole in the third act. Now, this was a ballsy move by Nolan. Two-Face is definitely one of the more well-known villains in the Batman universe, but rather than saving him for a future film, like leaving a scarred Harvey Dent in a hospital bed who wakes up and tears off his gauze in a post credit scene, Nolan instead just left it all out there for this movie, keeping Dent a smaller character within the Joker's story. And the ultimate effect of that is it makes Joker an even more lethal threat, with his lawlessness persisting as a sort of pandemic throughout the world, even when he's still in captivity. Now, it's been said that other superhero movies suffer from a lack of a compelling villain, at least in the way that the Joker was. And I guess you could say that's because most superhero movies these days are structured as lower stakes chapters within a cinematic universe leading up to one later larger event. But really, I think it's just because it's very, very challenging in screenwriting to create an engaging villain who doesn't become more likable than the hero, which of course could ruin the story because then we don't care if the hero succeeds. Now, I would say The Dark Knight pulled off this balance and really only a handful of other movies in cinematic history have done the same. But let's revisit Logan for a second. The villains Donald Pierce and Xander Rice are functional to the story, but they don't present nearly as big of a threat to Logan as the main villain of the story himself. His own body and powers are failing him, and then by the end of the movie, brief spoiler alert if you haven't seen Logan, this conflict is literalized when he has to fight a clone version of himself, X-24. And yes, that is a thoughtful, interesting way to manifest Logan's obstacles in the movie. Unfortunately, this type of villainy doesn't have a transcendent face and an identity that is seared into our collective memories the way the Joker is. I think we can also look at Wonder Woman this way. Now, Wonder Woman is a fine film that drew inspiration from another superhero classic that people look at as a gold standard, Richard Donner's Superman in 1978. Wonder Woman even makes a lot of the same moves the Dark Knight made. It explores the character's relationship to humanity as a whole, and it totally embraces its period piece genre. But when it comes to the villain, or villains, I should say, they aren't really game changers when it comes to challenging the hero in any meaningful way. Now, on the other hand, you could argue that movies like Wonder Woman and Logan don't need to be about their villains. And the real reason that people like these movies is because, like The Dark Knight, they're actually part of a larger narrative. And that brings me to my final reason that I think The Dark Knight is considered a gold standard. The movie's existence and success is itself seen as heroic. Like I mentioned earlier, when Nolan took over the Batman franchise, the character had become kind of a joke in the movies. Like seriously, Batman and Robin was so bad that Joel Schumacher recently apologized for it. So when Nolan reimagined the character as a darker, more thoughtful, morally complex hero in the style of the comics like Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns, Nolan was praised as a hero who saved the franchise. See, in this case, Batman needed that gritty turn because the movies needed it, and it was true to who the character is in the comics. The same can be said for James Mangold with Logan. After early successes with the first two X-Men movies, The Last Stand and X-Men Origins weren't exactly steps forward for Wolverine as a character, until he too eventually turned into a bit of a joke. But then James Mangold arrived and proved that he could take the character to interesting places with the Wolverine. And then his follow-up film, Logan, was the perfect expression of what he wanted to do with the character. And not only was that gritty turn something fans wanted, like Batman, it's true to the character in the comics. In fact, the Old Man Logan comic that Logan was inspired by is way more violent than what we saw in the movie. And this is a big reason why it feels a little weird when studios make a superhero dark and gritty just for the sake of making him or her dark 
dark or gritty. I think they're learning the wrong lessons from The Dark Knight. Nolan went dark because that's who Batman is, and it's what the franchise needed at that time. It was the darkness we deserved and the darkness we needed. Now, Wonder Woman wasn't particularly violent or gritty, but like Logan in The Dark Knight, the movie itself has this heroic nature. Like, after decades without no Wonder Woman on the big screen and the property going through development hell, Patty Jenkins finally delivered a really good film that satisfied fans. Other superhero movies may have had better structured films with better action and better jokes, but unless we walk out of the movie feeling like the movie fulfilled some desire or fixed some nagging frustration with the franchise, we're not gonna hold it up as the best superhero movie of all time. Look, I don't know if I personally will ever be able to see any superhero film as better than The Dark Knight. It came out during my formative years. Like, I feel like the first of these flesh whiskers popped out during the Joker's magic trick scene with the pencil. And I think for a lot of us, nostalgia just tends to glorify films that we grew up with over new films that come along. But I think films like Logan have shown that if you follow The Dark Knight's footsteps in the right way, you can at least be part of the conversation. Now, after that, it's just a matter of amazing action, a great script, a great director, a perfect cast, and one of the best villains of all time, but really is the number one spot that important. Do you think any superhero movie has topped The Dark Knight? If so, which one? Or if not topped, has any superhero movie gotten close in your eyes? And what about The Dark Knight do you think makes it the exceptional case for when we talk about superhero movies? Now, we at New Rockstars love talking about superheroes and comics on this channel, so be sure to subscribe to New Rockstars to see all of our videos. And also like this video and share it and tweet at us with your top superhero films. You can hit me up personally at EA Voss or New Rockstars at New Rockstars. You can also contribute to us on Patreon. We started adding a lot of exclusive content to our Patreon page, and you can access it for a contribution that you decide. A big thanks to all of our current patrons, especially my man, Chris Kale. All right, I'm leaving now because I'm the host you deserve, New Rockstars, but not the one you need right now. Dun, 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 dun. This tunnel's long. <laughs>